Hello, today we're going to be talking about slipping versus tipping. Uh, and so when we talk about slipping versus tipping, uh, what we're talking about is kind of one of two ways that we're going to start to move an object. Uh, so for this, before we start really, uh, imagine we've got a refrigerator standing right here, and I start pushing on that refrigerator. One of two things is going to happen to that fridge that's going to start kind of motion with the fridge. The first is I start pushing on it, it'll start to slide, and I kind of slide it along uh, the ground uh, in, into its location. Uh, the other is I start pushing on this, and rather than sliding, the whole thing actually starts to tip over, uh, and when that tipping occurs, it kind of falls onto its side. So I want to figure out which of those two options is going to occur, uh, and friction uh, and couples are kind of the key elements in deciding which of those two options is going to occur for any one situation. So <clears throat> why do things tip over? Uh, sliding we kind of talked about with dry friction, but tipping over is a little bit new in terms of the friction chapter. So when we try to push an object uh, or push things along a rough surface, we're going to often get two couples acting on the body. And remember, couples are sets of forces that are equal and opposite but exert a moment. And so if I have a moment, it's going to tend to rotate the body, which is what happens when it tips. So that first set of couples <clears throat> is going to be the pushing force. So I'm going to be pushing, imagine I'm pushing somewhere in the middle of the fridge. Um, that's going to have some height. Uh, but the friction force itself, friction exer is exerted at the surface. Uh, so the friction force is down here at the contact point between the fridge and the ground. Uh, so since these, if I don't have any motion, these have to be equal and opposite, but they've got some distance or separation, so they're going to exert a moment on this fridge. What's counteracting that, what uh, prevents it from tipping over is that the slightest push uh, is I'm going to have two other forces uh, that are going to kind of counteract that moment. So the other forces that are counteracting that, I've got the gravity force, which is always going to be acting on the center of gravity or center of mass of the object. Uh, and I'm going to have the normal force down here. Now the normal force, if all things, uh, if there's no pushing force at all, will be perfectly lined up. Uh, but the normal force can actually shift back and forth uh, and that shifting back and forth is what is used to counteract the moment uh, exerted by the pushing force and friction force. So if we are looking at this, we need to understand kind of what non-uniform normal forces are to understand how this normal force shifts around. So <clears throat> I've got three fridges uh, down here on the ground. Uh, the center one is the first one we're going to talk about. So the normal force if I've got a gra uh, gravitational force pulling down, uh, there's no pushing force at all. The normal force is not actually a point load. Uh, it's going to be a normally distributed force. And we can re usually replace that normally distributed force with a single force kind of right in the center. So two forces, equal and opposite. There's no moments, uh, nothing else to worry about. If I have a pushing force with that opposing friction force like I have over here, what's going to happen uh, is the distributed force is going to rearrange itself to try to counteract that moment exerted by the couple. So it's going to shift more pressure over onto this side, uh, and it's going to have less pressure on this side. So the overall magnitude of the normal force is the same, uh, but the end result of that redistributing of the distributed force uh, is <clears throat> that the normal force kind of shifts over to the corner there. Uh, the opposite is going to occur if I push in the opposite direction. So if I'm pushing this way, I get more pressure over on this side, less on this side. <coughs> so the limit to how uh, far I can redistribute this force, I can't redistribute it further than having all of the pressure concentrated over here at this point. So the furthest I can shift over this uh, kind of normal force is the edge of the body. If I go further, then that becomes kind of an impossible scenario. I can't have normal force if there's no contact between the bodies. And so <clears throat> to determine whether it's going to slip or tip based on pushing on this bridge, uh, I need to basically look at both possible scenarios. So for slipping, we're going to deal with that first. Uh, if the moments exerted by the two couples can cancel each other out uh, right up to the point where the body slips or starts to slide relative to the surface, then it's going to slip. <clears throat> 
And so to determine the pushing force required to make this the whole thing slide, uh, I basically kind of ignore those moments uh, at first. And I'm going to figure out the pushing force that it just wouldn't need to make it slide. Um, <clears throat> so for that, I'm assuming impending motion. So I've got this pushing force. Uh, and if this pushing force exceeds the static coefficient of friction times the normal force, um, that is the point where the pushing force will make this whole thing slide. If I'm assuming tipping, I need to figure out the pushing force that's going to make the moment that can't be counteracted anymore. Uh, so we're going to assume that the normal force is shifted all the way over to the edge, so it's just about to tip. If I push that normal force just a little bit further, it becomes impossible. So I figure out the couple, or the moment, exerted by this gravity force and the normal force. And then if I know that, I know the weight and this separation distance here. Then I can figure out the pushing force required to create that same equal and opposite moment uh, based on this separation distance here. So I can figure out the pushing force that's required to <clears throat> go ahead and make this body tip. To figure out which of these two options can occur first, basically I'm going to need to do both options and figure out which is lower. So find the force that would be required to make the object slide along the surface. Uh, again, you're going to assume impending motion, uh, figure out what is the pushing force uh, or the maximum friction force that I can have, which is the static coefficient of friction times the normal force. I'm going to find the force that would be required to make the object tip over, uh, use the moment uh, exerted by the normal force all the way on the edge and the gravitational force. I need to figure out the moment that that exerts and then find the pushing force that exerts exact the moment, the pushing force and the uh, friction force at a certain distance that's going to exact, exert the exact opposite moment. Uh, and then I've got two pushing forces. Whichever of the two options is lower, so whichever pushing force is lower of those two, is the option that's going to happen first. Uh, so if the pushing force for this part is lower, then it's going to tip first. If the pushing force is lower for this part, it's going to slip or slide first. Some of the factors that, is slip, that affect slipping versus tipping, um, the height of the pushing or pulling force. So the higher my pushing force, the greater this distance, uh, and the greater the couple becomes. So if I push higher an, obje an object, if I imagine pushing on the top of the fridge, it's more likely to tip. If I push on the bottom of the fridge, it's more likely to slide. The width of the base of the object, um, so the bigger the width, the more separation I can get this way, the further my normal force can slide over, and the more stable an object becomes, so the harder it becomes to tip over. And finally, the roughness of the surface, uh, it's going to limit kind of how much pushing force I need to slide. So something on a very smooth surface is going to tend to slide, while something on a very rough surface is going to tend to tip over. So with that, that's all I have for today's video lecture. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.